gang, uh, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Hive Swap Friend Sim. You know, I've just realized, why do I do an intro if I also have the intro at the start of the episode telling you what this game is? Kooky, right? Probably because I'm too used to multiple styles of Let's Play, and I haven't found my stride yet. Anyway. Fresh from your most recent bout of gratuitous bodily injury and touching scenes of camaraderie you sold her on. Had a few setbacks. Made a couple silly choices. Boy, do things just keep happening. But let nobody say that you, the main character, are incapable of growth and change. You have made sure not to be caught in the wilderness near dawn again. Made a way back to civilization. Can't wait to discover what new adventures await you. Adventures like friendship. Okay, we got a teal blood and we got a bronze blood. Huh. I don't recognize either of their symbols. Tagora... Gorjak looks kind of yonder-y, yonder-esque. And we got Vicari Ratite, or Ratite. I can never remember what the consistent thing is for troll stuff. Because there is a troll Japanese, it's just called Eastern Alternian. Um, so, you know. I guess I'll just go left to right. Old standby. You wander down a street in a not-too-demolished-looking part of town, but you don't really take in much of it. You're not looking where you're going. Elementary mistake, especially on a planet where everything that exists seems to be on a spectrum of engineered for murder to could be a weapon in a pinch, but you've got a lot on your mind. And now the car. These guys probably have some ridiculous word for it, but you haven't learned it. You had noticed slams into you, sending you flipping hand over feet and adding a few more new concerns to your list, your bones and organs. You sound of the driver yelling, watch where you're going, lump squirt chugger. Fades as they drive away and you assess the situation. You stretch each live in turn, which you've got to say doesn't feel great. You've landed in a bush, which is covered in sharp spines. Arms and legs still work, though, and when you do an experimental cough, no blood comes out. Pretty lucky, you think. You may have redefined what luck means by this point in your journey, but you'll take what you can get. You don't figure that luck will extend to the driver turning around to help meet you out of this bush. Your gaze is meeting and sparking an immediate connection that leads you to a beautiful and lifelong friendship, but you let yourself hope. A few minutes of struggle, the answer to your comradely daydreams comes into focus above you, a figure outlined by the spiny leaves of your plant prison and the glow of the moons. The control you see is in the drive of the car, but you don't care. Your heart's beating wildly with your continued lucky streak. Oh, fuck. He needs a noise. Um, <clears throat> Hello. You seem to have fallen victim to a colliding scamp. <laughs> colliding scamper. Colliding scamper with that scuttle buggy back there. Oh my god. Have you contacted your personal legislator? If not, I'd like to offer my services. My name is Tagora Gorjak. Gorjak. But please, call me Gorgor. I'm here for you, for an nominal fee, of course. He offers a business card from his sleek teal vest and. Uh, he pulls a business card and offers it to you with a precise flick of the wrist. His claw beds are perfect. Claw beds. He tries to sit up again, buoyed by this offer for assistance. He's some type of doctor, maybe, or lawyer? Yeah, the uh, the term legislator is, um, like, lawyers and executioners in one, and that's what many of the teal bloods are. That's what uh, Terezi is in Homestuck. Doesn't matter, really, because he said he was here for you. Those words really go right ahead and burn themselves onto the softest chamber of your heart right next to the aorta. You start telling your plight thus far, reaching up through the brambles towards this beacon of hope. The guy seems trustworthy in you. It's not just your lack of options talking, you swear. As you shift, the moonlight shines on you. He steps back, dropping the card. The one eye not covered by a swoop of product infusing hair opens wide. He recovers, smoothing his hair down his chest and straightening up, clearing his throat as you continue to explain. Yo, what? Oh yes, an alien. I knew that. I've done work with aliens before, so the situation shouldn't be an issue at all. In legislation stipend. Everyone deserves an equal everyone deserves an equal opportunity to be represented by me. In fact, we may be able to use this in our favor for a larger cash settlement. It all depends on our angle. Hey, try moving your chug column. Don't move your neck after a thing. You're not sure why it's necessary, but wiggle your torso, hoping that's right. You've never wanted anything more in your meager existence than to follow this specific directive perfectly. I hope that isn't like a mind control thing. No, not that. A little hip jiggle. Not so much that you might think it's a come on, but enough to say, Hey, I'm friendly, and I know what the fuck I'm doing. No, you're the thing that holds up your think pan. Work with me. 
confusion and Nolan. Nolan. <laughs> God, I'm dyslexic. You continue what you hope is part of a troll friendship ritual, shimming, shimming various parts of your anatomy deeper into the bush until you get to your neck. And he clasps his hands together. There we go. That one hurt, didn't it? Definitely a case of column snap, which can get us a decently hefty restitution. Your neck feels fine or it doesn't hurt any more than the rest of you, but you give him what you hope is a convincingly painful lot of agreement. Of course, you may need to front the initial legislation costs. You may also have to injure you further to ensure our case is convincing, but you've got to break a few cluck beast embryos to make a grublet as well, you know. <laughs> I, I, I honestly do legitimately enjoy the, the dumb way that Homestuck goes about its its world building, where it just, yeah, just, just put, make it dumber. Just make it dumber. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I'm talking correctly. Initial cost. Yes, I think we make make a mutually beneficial team if you're willing to do what it takes to bring about the justice you deserve. What do you say? How would you like me to help you? He's talking really fast. You're not sure you what to think about your lack of funds or the idea of breaking any more bones, but that smile is sharp and shiny and pointed right at you. You want more of it. Damn right. Whoops. Um, I'll tell them about the heaps of money I have. You mentioned how incredibly loaded you are and how core to your sense of values it is to pay well for good work. And that's what we call good business. Now, get up out of that pickle frond and let's get you presentable. He watches you flail a few times before he sighs, unbuttons his sleeves, and rolls them up to the elbow. Each fold is crisp and even. It takes a while, but you're good at being patient. There's a 12% cost increase for instances of manual labor. It'll all be explained in your bill. Ooh, it's itemized. I'm sure an alien of means such as yourself will be able to handle it. Take his hand, and he pulls you up out of the bush. It's kind of a rough job. Not as strong as he looks, you guess. He glares at you like he's daring to say shit about it, and you're a quick learner. He cuts you off mid-thank you. My office is not far from here. We can go get things started. And by things, I mean get you clean and sign a lot of vaguely worded, yet stringently binding documents. He walks with purpose. You shake off the flora stuck in your various body parts and do your best to catch up. From the outside, his officer basically just seems like his hive. You've learned a thing or two during this shitstorm of cultural exchange, though. You've got to play it cool when a potential friend invites you home. You never know what cages or monsters or methods of evisceration they might have laying around, and you want to prepare a nice, chill look on your face for whatever carnage you're about to be confronted by. Oh, wow. Oh, he's loose as a weasel! Oh, because he's trying to weasel money out of me. <laughs> I really do love um, Homestuck and the Worlds Within as uh, a metatextual story that is aware of its own nature of a story. It doesn't work. Your face falls to bewildered hell when you walk inside because it's all chrome and glass and broad white walls in there. It's like he bought the fanciest looking crate and barrel display room he could find down to the last useless minimalist accessory and then never sat down in it. His Lucis, a ferret, no, oh, it's a ferret, wow. Is chilling on an enormous silver thing that is halfway between a throne and a play tower. I should get my cats one of those. You know, I used to have a ferret, but it ran away. Of course, I found it outside, so... Jury's out on whether or not it was even a ferret to begin with. Everything is bright and clean and at perfect right angles, and you don't see weapons anywhere. It's fucking creepy. <laughs> you ask him if you just moved in, because polite conversation seems like the best thing you can do. In the absence of something specific to focus your fear on, you're just sort of a little afraid of everything. You're not paying me to learn my life story. Unless you'd like to. In that case, no. I've lived here most of my life. I'll go ahead and add that to your bill. I I noticed that his quirk doesn't actually appear to affect in his text. He Anytime he adds money, he adds a little thing down there. Where... I can highlight it, actually. Right here. Uh, where I, I, I'm, I guess I'm supposed to sign my name. And then uh, he adds a money order up there. You sit at one of the chairs. Should you sit in it? By all means... Do not make yourself at home. <laughs> Head straight to my ablution trap while I prepare our contract. You really want to connect with this guy, and you were just, like, just how you vibe right there. Where you were just thinking about sitting your bedraggled ass in his fancy chair, and you could totally tell you were thinking it. But you don't want to be friends badly enough to walk straight into something that has the word trap right in its name without at least pottering for a second. You become savvier during all this. Take no entrapment, please, or take a goddamn bath. I'll take a bath. A little concerned about the trap part of the instructions you receive, but hey, at least a trap is one. A trap you know about is better than one you don't. With everything else, you can see some. 
you can see so with everything else you can see so freaking pristine he has to be hiding evil somewhere you wonder if it's a dungeon dungeon could be cool the ferret bounds off his pedestal and jerks its head for you to follow it you do because it seems like a regular thing to do and Tagora is busy on his computer leads you to the bathroom where everything is fancy and clean is everything else you've seen Lucia shitters at you for a second, squirms its big noodle body around, and leaves, shutting the door behind it. You wait a second until it's probably gone, until you test the handle. It's unlocked. Huh. You wonder what the point, or, you know, motive might be for leading you to this room until you turn and look at yourself in the mirror. That is some haggard-looking stuff right there, so, fair. You're flying by the seat of your pants, but you guess you're supposed to take a bath? If not, and he gets pissed and unleashes the ferret on you, at least you'll meet your maker nice and clean. You have to expect some indiscernible goo or blood to come out of the faucet in the weird lumpy tub, but thankfully it's just water. Once you're in, you take a look at the truly inordinate about amount of bath products you have at your fingertips. There are three shelves of little bottles and soaps and unidentifiable lather some accessories by the tub alone. There's even more by the mirror. The labels are all gibberish, of course, but you go and sniff a few until you find something flowery and you just go to town. You take more time than you should in there, but you haven't experienced a moment of luxurious solitude in a bit. Full-time friendship searching can be difficult work, and it's good to recharge. Once you're freshly scrubbed and dried, you slather yourself head to toe with some lotion you find in an iridescent vial. You hope he won't want you using it. He wants you to be presentable, and this stuff is sparkly. You're starting to feel rejuvenated as hell. Ready to knock this friendship stuff right out of the park. You leave your dirty, torn up clothes on the floor, wrap yourself in one of the many satin bathrobes folded on a shelf, and head back out to find Tagora. He's standing in his foyer, waiting with the contract he typed up for you. When he sees you, his eyebrows ticks up. I see you went with a rainbow drink of serum. Full body application. Bold choice. I mean, it's incredibly rare and expensive product, and I do expect to be remunerated, but I won't lie. It works. <laughs> crush. <laughs> of course it's called Crush. Yeah, sure, that stuff. You don't want to let on that you don't know what it is, since he seems impressed. Instead, you give his ego a little stroke and tell him you hadn't seen such a sumptuous array of self-care accoutrement in so long you couldn't help yourself. Not everyone takes skincare as seriously as they should. You know, that's a good point. I assumed you were taking forever in there because you'd gotten lost or didn't know how to use the ablution trap. I hadn't considered the possibility you were just doing your regimen. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I like this guy. You hold your arms out to admire the well-hydrated sheen you have going on. This time you're not even really bullshitting. It does actually look pretty good. Tagori seems like he's struggling. He keeps opening his mouth to say something and then changing his mind. He's clutching the documents in his hand like a flotation device. He looks down at them, then back at you. I typically only use that particular product to highlight my cheek blades, but there's no reason you shouldn't apply it more verbally, especially if cost isn't an issue. It's a little drastic for my personal style, but there is a certain unorthodox glamour to it. Next bit looks like it hurts him a bit to get out. Do you... Would you like to step outside to see the full effect? Bet your ass you would. You're curious about what he means by effect, and it seems more fun than signing stuff. Places the documents down on his deck like they made of glass, not paper. He glances up at the Lucis. Sort of tilts his head to the side. You look away and give them privacy to do whatever eyeball communication is going on. After a bit, Tagora clears his throat and heads toward the door. You know, comment on the bluish flush in his cheeks. For all the shift in his demeanor, he still seems like he might kick your ass. Kick you out on your ass if you try to get too feelingsy with him. You start to glow as soon as you step out into the front, into his dark front yard. Not a light bulb kind of, but a subtle illuminal, ethereal luminescence. What is this stuff? Um, recall from the last few episodes that rainbow drinkers are this world's equivalent of vampires. And while normally everyone's nocturnal, uh, rainbow drinkers are the only ones that can go out in the sun and survive. And they actually glow. Now that is a look. I mean, there's still the unfortunate issue of your homelessness and overall aberrance. And the fact that you're wearing my ablution robe... Rental fee. But it's cutting edge, I'll give you that. You look almost like a real one. You don't know what that means, but you want to roll around eternally in the praise part. You ask if the look will help your case. Your, oh right, your case, of course. He bites his lip and looks back through the window at the paper sitting on the desk where he left them. You hope he still wants to represent you, or at least that he'd want to hang out even if he wasn't going to. You don't get a chance to prod though, because someone rounds the corner on the sidewalk in front of his hive. Takora's mask immediately shudders into its usual simpering face. F mm, face turns into a mask. Edge of panic around his eye, though, huh? Wow, Gorgic, what do we have here? It's a blue theme troll, which, if you remember right, means he's a fancier guy than Tagora. He's grinning like Troll Christmas came early. You can feel Tagora vibrating out of his skin next to you. Who is this guy? 
when he gets close enough to get a good look at you, he gets he jumps and screeches, What the blood the, the bold's boiling fuck? Tagore is frozen, corner of his mouth pulled back to show his teeth. The new guy you're ignoring him in favor of notices you're messing you're dressed in Tagora's monogram leisure wear. If his look of fascinating uh, if his look of fascinated horror is anything to go by. You don't really know what makes you do it. You should wait for Tagore to get himself together and do the talking, but you're riding the high horse of him, almost seeming like he was enjoying your company. Plus, nothing boosts confidence like looking like a beautiful spooky angel. So you toss your head, put on your best fancy guy voice, and say, What, you never seen a real one before? You're placing all your chips on this guy knowing something you don't. But when his eyes get huge and he starts stumbling over himself to back away down the sidewalk, you know it's paid off. Tagore obliques and then jumps right in, picking off directly where you left off. Surely someone as well as formed yourself knows a rainbow drinker when he sees one. Yeah! We've tricked him into thinking I'm a vampire. Blue guy doesn't respond with anything more than coherent string of yelps as he hightails it back the way he came. When he's gone, you turn to Tagora and ask him super casually what a rainbow drinker is. He stares at you in stunned silence. Are you... Are you telling me you didn't know? You not. And you ran with it anyway, exploiting the fear you picked up on to turn the tide of a delicate encounter to your favor? You shrug. You guess so. You tell Tagora you hope his friend wasn't too freaked out. Friend? Oh, no, I hate that guy. There's simply times being liked by your betters is helpful. Though technically fearing me is just as good. A better, maybe. So, you know. Um, thank you. Tagora's laugh is soft. Ha 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 ha. It's not a sound you expected to hear. He's happy because of something you did. You can't help it. You start laughing too. Ooh, I'm excited. That was a bit of a rush, wasn't it? It was almost fun. I suddenly didn't see it coming anyway. I underestimated you. He gives you an appraising look and then takes a deep breath. You're nervous all of a sudden. You feel unbalanced on the precipice of what he might be about to say. From one prevaricator to another, I will let you know on something. I actually haven't encountered an alien before. Oh, sweet relief. Surcharge or tooth reveal. <laughs> You tell him his act was airtight, and as long as everyone's doing the true thing, you admit you lied a bit too. You aren't actually rich. Yes, that's clear now. You have the invaluable ability to fake it, though, and that's potentially much better. Why don't we put your case on hold for the time being? You wouldn't have enjoyed the outcome of our legal system anyway. <laughs> Preemptive interest on health soon. <laughs> we can find an alternative means of you working off your debt. I think we may make a better team than I previously anticipated. With our wits combined, we can tackle bigger and better things than traffic injuries. He flexes his hand at his side, and then one swift and decisive moment extends it to you. On his face is something close to an honest-to-God, real-ass smile. I've never actually performed a legitimate partnership of any sort before, but I believe this is how it's done. What do you say? The glow in your heart shines brighter than any expensive and still kind of mysterious lotion. You take his hand in your firm, no-nonsense grasp of pure and inexorable joy and shake it. Yeah! We did it! Hell yeah! That was good! That was really good! Wow. Hey, here's a crazy idea. What if I just rolled right into the next one? Oh, right and wrong. Right like Phoenix right? Boo. Yeah, let's just keep on going. Is it space? Vicari Ratite, or Radite. Probably best for you to stop trying to predict what's going to happen at this point. Everything happened so far on this planet has been kind of chaotic. Instead, in fact, you're ready for something more familiar. You head back to the side of your abandoned spaceship. Sure, it's smashed beyond repair, but it's a little slice of home. Maybe at least one or two pieces of it are fixable. You march off in what you think is the right direction. When you get there, you're not alone. A little guy in a hat and big goggles is standing there, gazing at your spaceship. Maybe assessing it? As you watch, he breaks off a couple of gears and stuffs them in his pockets. Hey, you clear your throat loudly. Good galloping gravy. Why, I've never seen the likes of you before. You know, this guy's voice crystallized immediately. Like, for the other ones, I was like, oh, fuck, what, am, what do I do for their voice? This one was so easy. What strange wonders the heavens have rained down on us today. You quickly lose any indignation you were building up. He's smiling at you, and his words seem somewhat amicable. Maybe the, you got this all wrong. Maybe this is the next person you're going to get chummy with. You cut right at the chase. No uh, point in beating around the ground leaf covering. That's probably what they call it on this planet. You let the guy know you're the proprietor of the spaceship he's stripping, and you're in mighty need of a new friend. A friend, eh? A bosom companion, a pal about town. I've never seen Nary I've seen nary a Tom and Dick as a Harry around these parts who might fit the bill. Oh yeah, so troll names all have to be um, six letters. Their first and last name. 
you were kind of trying to imply that this guy could be your friend. It's too late to say that now. You try to imply, is it too late to say that now? You try to imply with your eyebrows. As for me, day-to-day -day matters here in Altonia interest me not. For well, I only care about hurling our great speeds through the boundless expanse of the cosmos. That's right, space. It's space flight that controls my every waking moment and all my order. In accordance with my duty as a future Altonian crusader, of course. No oxygen, no wind, total vacuum. That's the life for me, all right. Flying in space, above the atmosphere. Not within the realm of gravity's purview. Wouldn't have it any other way. Right. You get the feeling you're missing something. This guy seems defensive about his interest in space flight. Like, maybe he's trying to say something totally different. Whatever it is, his internal conflict clearly takes precedence over your issues. He seems like a great candidate for a friend, despite the fact that his voice sounds like it belongs over a newsreel about World War II. Ah! I knew it. I totally knew it. I was like, this guy needs a transatlantic accent. I have just one queer for you, sport, if I may be so bold. Do you also like space flights? Do you yearn to see the moon shining above, the clouds whipping by as you chase and tease the impish western wind, and then also keep going past that up into space? Uh, I'm not so sure about space flight. His, his eyes widen. You see them sparkle? Ah, I see. You're an individual with a more sophisticated palette. A real connoisseur of the buoyant art you are. Someone like you could never be satisfied with the anemic affair of traveling through the inky blackness of the galaxies. I believe a jaunt to my hive is in order. Let's get a wiggle on. <gasps> There's a lot going on there, but you understand that he wants you to follow him. Friendly guy seems to take you to a building where all the rooms have to be balanced on spindly looking stilts. The hive soars above you into the sky. He gestures to a little platform attached to a pulley system like a rudimentary elevator. It brings you up into a small dark room. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that fucking thing. It looks like a man ray. Hell yeah. His house is pretty much what you would have guessed. The walls are covered in star maps and pictures of spaceships. You notice many of them have cheery slogans splashed across them, saying things like, Explore the galaxy! Because you'll cry to fulfill your duty to society, and enlist, travel, make friends, don't get cold. Your new friend doesn't seem happy as he looked around the place. Just the hire for a dedicated spacecraft enthusiast, isn't it? You nod. You're not sure what this is leading to, but no one ever went wrong relying on non-specific, plausible, deniable agreement. Oh, my fooling. You've rumbled me, potential new chum. What you see before you is a collage of falsehoods. I'm nothing but an avatar of baloney. <laughs> <laughs> in truth, the mere temptations and desires of space do nothing to tickle my biscuit. The thought of participating in the glorious eternal conquest gives me the screamy mimis. My interest lies in something a little lower down. He reaches up and peels back one of the posters. Behind it is another poster. This one showing a view of clouds in the night sky. Behold, my shame. <laughs> The truth is, I long to toss and turn within the grasp of Mistress Gravity's sweet fingers. To traverse the sky, can such a thing be? Imagine, flying within the confines of Altonia's very atmosphere. Divine the very conventions of what we all know to be true. Instead of down, up. Instead of falling, soaring. Can you imagine? Can you see it before you? Could you ever dream the existence of a flying machine? Airplanes exist. I brought you here to show me my truth. And you treat me to mockery. An airplane? A plane that floats in the air? Flying machines are a serious business. I think you should leave. Oh, shit. Well. Huh. That's, uh... Yeah, you know what? I've got to stick to my guns. You know, only do so many. That was really good, though. Oh, man. I took a little break in recording. I'm glad to be playing this again. It's a very good video game. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Hive Swap Friend Sim. That was episode volume four. Yeah. Um, I might start going through more of these as I as I go through. I don't want to um, take up too much time on it because I got a lot of stuff to let's play. But I also don't like releasing too many videos per day, so. Yeah, anyway. Uh, I'm an Alfred. I've swapped friends soon. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks for coming.